Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Pair Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out the latest Raspberry Pi OS for the Raspberry Pi, which I'm going to be testing on the Pi 400. So let's get started. Now, I love the fact that Raspberry Pi does the on and off thing where one year they do hardware, one year they do software. This way, you know, you're going to be getting software and hardware updates as you go along. So we are now blessed with this newest update for Raspberry Pi OS. Previously, before this, they have released the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. So it's like hardware, then software, hardware, then software. So, so the next thing we should be expecting is hardware updates. Anyway, to get this is super easy. All you need to do is have Raspberry Pi Imager, Go down the list and select the latest version of their Raspberry Pi OS. Just make sure it's past September 3rd. Anything past September 3rd will have the latest updates. And you could use this for 64-bit OS or 32-bit. I am currently using it for 64-bit. Uh, the process takes about six minutes to download into your SD card, depending on what kind of speed of SD card you're using. And then once you're done, we could just slap this onto your Pi 400 or your Raspberry Pi 4, and you should be good to go. As far as the first boot goes, it does take a few minutes because it is expanding the SD card. So yeah, once you're done with that, it will reboot itself into this new menu. Okay, so this is the first time I'm actually booting up into the Raspberry Pi and there's a new setup menu. So I'm gonna check this out. Uh, before you get started, there's a few things to set up. I'm gonna hit next. Oh, so actually this is the time where you would set up all the, you know, back then it would just boot into the desktop, but you would have to go into this menu. So it automatically pops this up for you. So now I'm gonna go into US keyboard, use US, language and next it's going to set that up it might even ask me to update everything but i don't have any internet connected to the raspberry pi 400 yet so it might not even work until i plug in an ethernet okay here i go can i use the standard raspberry oops you know what pi uh raspberry raspberry I like that it's actually making you create a new user account. It might not even allow for the Pi user because that's the default user. Uh, okay, it allows it. Reduce size of desktop on this monitor? No, because I like the 1080. So actually, if you've got a small monitor, they could actually resize it for you through this menu. Next, select Wi-Fi network. I'm going to skip this for now because I'm going to plug in the Ethernet and I'm going to skip the update software. Now, this just updated three days ago. So it should be on the latest packages, uh, even though it's only about three days old. So now it's gonna reboot. I am running the 64 bit, so we're gonna see how this works. Okay, we are now fully booted. I don't think they changed the wallpaper. This stays the same uh, menu. You have the standard menu, but what's new on the new menu, supposedly you could just type. Yep, there you go. Chromium browser, I'm able to type in there. So that's the new feature. One of the new features is to be able to search in the menu. So if I wanted, um, let's see, VLC media player, it's not there. Um, what else? Settings. Okay. Yeah, it works perfectly well. It's really just the new feature for this is the settings. Next thing we have is this. We have now a better control over the audio and also a better control over the Wi-Fi. So back then we were not able to actually get advanced menus here and we should be able to get them now. Uh, no APs found. Okay, so it found two hotspots, well, two Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi, hit okay. There you go. Okay, now that we're connected to the Wi-Fi, it actually does have a few updates. So I'm gonna hit select. And you can see a few things like the Raspberry Pi Manager, this Raspberry Pi Config. I might even need this. In order to use the new feature of the um, Network Manager, we would have to enable it. So heading into the terminal, which I'll increase the size for this, we could do sudo raspi config. And in here, there should be a new option for, let me see if it's in interface option, not here system options network on boot wireless lan no uh advanced option network interface network config and there you go instead of using dhcp cd we now need to use network manager and if we use network manager and configure everything the menus will change oh it actually enabled it live uh no i don't want to reboot but now 
Oh, we do have to reboot. Okay, let's reboot this. Okay, here we go. Now that it's rebooted, there is now an advanced option. We could connect to our Wi-Fi right now. Uh, we might have to redo the settings, but we are now using Network Manager, which is great. I could go down this list, go to advanced options, connect to hidden Wi-Fi's, also add a VPN. Now there are a limited amount of VPNs that are working for Network Manager, and I don't think WireGuard is one of them, which you can compile. I've done it many, many years. There's, there is a, a Network Manager WireGuard um, container, or I, I keep using container, but a plugin for Network Manager, but it's not native to uh, Debian itself. So if you need to use anything that's VPN related, you would do sudo apt, oh, let me make this bigger install network manager just hit tab a few times and you will see what they have here so they have pptp open vpn open connect and um you know what is this fortis fortinet uh ssl vpn uh, they have a few that you can just use for now mainly if you want to use WireGuard. um let me see if i can google it okay Let's change this over to use system taskbar because I don't like to use the native one. And let's go hit a new tab, Google, and I will search for network manager wire guard compile. I think it's this one, this one, X module or module and there is a full guide here on how to install so mainly you have to install wireguard uh no this is not it not it not it this is the software itself the wireguard software but i don't know why it doesn't show you where you could compile the software because you will have to manually compile this let's get out of this oh actually you know what i think i just saw it Check for the version of your network manager. Wirecard tools. No, it's not this one. Oh, I think it's this. Here you go. This itself, it might be a little bit small. I'll leave a link down in the description below, but it's from mox.sh, System Admin WireGuard Network Manager GNOME. Uh, it's fine. It's it's gonna work in itself, but mainly you need to compile this little plugin. Uh, network manager WireGuard to give you all the options for this basically editing WireGuard options and this way will allow you to add WireGuard to your um, network manager I'm gonna leave a link for this down in the description below but if you do need other plugins and stuff that's how you would do it uh, mainly they do have like open connect and the normal stuff that you would use open VPN and everything but if you really need a WireGuard you do have to compile this plugin and I'll leave a link it's super easy though you just follow and copy and paste what they have over here, which is like a handful of commands, and it, it's in your system. Now, next up, they do have something that is brand new, and I don't have, uh, I think it needs to be installed separately. So lib camera, um, hello. I don't think it's gonna work because I am using the Raspberry Pi uh, 400 and I don't have a camera installed. So I'm gonna leave a video of me testing it with uh, this Raspberry Pi with the camera attached to it. All right, so we're just testing this out with lib camera and it's super smooth, like look at that. And it's clear. There's also a bunch of options that you could use for lib camera just to test out stuff, but they have this new library now, which is Pi Camera 2, which is pretty good. All right, so here's the camera using lib camera, which is also using that Pi camera too. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to test out this library, the software itself, which is the lib camera help, also has a lot of features that you could play around with. But as you can see, everything moves so smooth over here. It's clear, I have no problems. I am using a Raspberry Pi camera. The one that you could actually attach the six millimeter lens or the 16 millimeter lens. So I am having a little bit of a benefit here, but so far it's really clear. And I'll leave a link down in the description below for where I'm researching all this. Basically, it's from the Raspberry Pi blog. Otherwise, 
Uh, that is it. I mean, the biggest new features is the network manager that we had to switch over to using uh, the audio that you can now kind of play around with this. Well, the, the previous version had it, but uh, supposedly this has been updated and also the new searchable features for the menu. So if I wanted to search for Chrome, it will pop up right over here. So those are the key features. They fixed a few bugs in the back end as well, but I, I'm not going to mention any of those. Just mainly camera network manager and the search features. Anyway, that is it for me guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up on my Discord or on uh, my comments down below. Now there are some issues regards to upgrading this from the previous version to this new version, which has been discussed on my Discord. So you can check it out over there. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts.